All right, this is a little Pico Core tutorial. So let's do the simple stuff first. This is the on switch here on the left. And these buttons will kind of switch to different parts of the sample if you hold them down. If you hold down two buttons, it will do a re-triggering effect. The effects will be slow from here, and then they'll speed up as you go here. So if we take this note here, be a slower retrig and if you take the same one and then go here it'll be faster and sometimes they are stuttered sometimes they're filtered sometimes they're pitched up so the fun is kind of just playing around with that um, now let's talk about some of the other well let's talk about the whole thing so we have a audio in um, and sync in which I'll talk about more we have an audio out here, and there is another audio out on the side that has a sync out, um, which is used for syncing with like a pocket operator type thing, which I'll go over. Um, then there's a boot button here, which you can press and then plug in a USB-C cable. So if you press this and then plug a USB-C cable here, it'll show up as a drive on your computer. You can upload a firmware to it uh, from the website and then get updated firmware or upload your own samples. Um, these are the knobs. There's a selector knob here and then knob A and knob B change depending on what has been selected. And then this is a volume knob. And then those are the buttons which I mentioned. Um, so let's go over all of the different parameters by going through the eight different selections. So if I turn it on and then move this knob, you'll see it changes the position of the red light. That shows you what parameter you're on. So if we go into the first one, that's parameter one, where knob A is the sample and knob B is the break probability. So sample changes the sample. Pretty simple. By default, there's like 75 different samples. Knob B will do this break pop probability, which will um, change all the probabilities at once. As you go higher, it'll add more and more random stuff and some distortion and whatnot. It gets kind of crazy. And then all the way back down, counterclockwise, it turns everything off. So you can use this knob to quickly get like generative randomness. Okay, so going to the second parameter, knob A is now a filter and knob B is now a stretch. So if we turn this counterclockwise, filter and then clockwise is fully open and then this one is a stretch kind of slows it down and you notice that when you turn these this light will indicate where it is brighter means higher so we turn this off the light will go off okay so let's go to the third on the third one we have a gate in this knob and this knob is going to be the probability of gating. So if you turn that all the way up, it'll randomly gate a little bit. It's pretty subtle right now, though. All right, next one. So number four, we have the probability of jumping. So you can see now it's playing each sample in line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if we turn this up, it'll jump around randomly turn it down, it'll jump sometimes and give a little different pattern each time. So it turned that one all the way down, counterclockwise, and then this one on the right is the probability of a retrig. So we turn that all the way up, you suddenly get some random retriggering, stuttering happening. Turn it all the way down, it turns it off completely. So sample, or sorry, selector number five, we're in the fifth position now. So light is right here. So now this knob is the tunnel probability. Tunneling is the basically where it'll change to a different sample at one of these slices. So if you turn it all the way up, almost every slice will change sample. If it's on just a little bit, it'll do it randomly but seldomly. This knob here is the reverse probability. And if you turn that up, you'll have reversing happening randomly. Not all the way up, it'll happen less randomly. 
Okay, so there's a bunch of probabilities, and as I mentioned in the first selector knob, that break, so if we go all the way to number one, this knob here, break, changes all those probabilities simultaneously um, in like a non-linear way. So there's lots of weird sweet spots in there that you can find. Okay, so continuing on, we have six. So at six, we have a sequencer. So if we turn this knob A all the way right, we'll turn the sequencer on. And then you can type in the sequence that you want. And then to play it, you turn this knob B all the way to the right. So now you can see it's kind of sequencing this backwards. To stop the sequencer, you turn knob B all the way counterclockwise, and then it'll go back. The sequence is saved, so if you ever want to go back, you just turn that knob back. That's sequencer mode. Um, next we have at 7, save and load. So save is right here on the left. So you turn this all the way right, it'll light up yellow. And that means that this has now been saved. So if you turn it off and turn it back on, it'll load it with the same parameters that have most of the same parameters, like the, the probabilities um, and the sequences will all still be there. And the current sample, current volume, current tempo. That is all saved. And if you just want to load it on the fly, you can turn this all the way to the right. It'll light up teal, and that will indicate that it has just loaded. Um, so we'll go to the last one. I'll show another example of that. So in the last one, A, we have volume here, a knob A. So that turns up volume. And then if you overdrive it, it'll make an overdrive, digital overdrive. So it's kind of lo-fi. And then here is the tempo. So the tempo shows you in binary what the actual tempo value is. You see a bunch of lights light up. If you go to the website, you can decipher exactly what that means and you can find the exact tempo that you want. So you can easily program whatever tempo you want to, to be. So now we've kind of changed the tempo. We can go back and save this. So now that when we turn it off and turn it on, it'll be back at that tempo. Okay. Oh yeah, this knob is like a filter knob and attenuator. So you can kind of, it's a little noisy because this thing is 8-bit. Also the sample may be a little noisy, but um, you can turn it down to kind of reduce some of that hiss at the top. I mean, this thing is 8-bit. It's definitely lo-fi. Um, some samples are better than others for sure too. Okay, um, one other thing. Yes, the buttons, I showed the button combination, so you can do these re-triggerings, but you can also press the left two and the right two buttons at the same time to do a pause or a mute, and then turn them off. So you can quickly mute and unmute. Okay, so with that, I will show some syncing. So if you take like a, another Pico Core or a pocket operator or something, you can sync these devices together. So now, with a pocket operator, you can turn it into S1. So you hear it, uh, turn this up. It slowed down the tempo here. It can speed up the tempo. Slow it down. And it will track the tempo with the, with the pocket operator. Okay, and then it also works the other way. So I'll turn this off and then swap these inputs. So the other way will be that the Pico Core has a sync out with this output here underneath the Pico. And then this will go into the input. This will go here. And we set it to four. And that won't play because it's waiting for a sync. And now, this automatically sends a sync. So then you can play with other pocket operators or Pico cores or whatever. And uh, one thing you can mute.
mute it and it will actually stop the clock. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, um, leave a note. I'm happy to answer more questions. If I forgot something or something's not working, um, it's pretty easy to upload new firmware. And I should mention also that you can upload your own audio. There's a tool on the website, picocore.com, that lets you upload your own samples to it. You can put up to um, three minutes of samples, 8-bit. Okay, that's all. Thanks.